guys, what is going on? My name is Ryan. I play chess and put my videos on YouTube. Today I wanted to continue my beginner chess master uh, channel uh, playlist in talking about en passant. Now what is en passant? It's uh, one of the two special moves in chess, the other one being castling. Um, it's a move that can occur only immediately after a pawn moves two ranks forward from its starting position, and an enemy pawn um, could have captured it had the pawn only moved one square forward. The opponent captures the just-moved pawn as it passes through, which is what en passant means in French, it passes through, um, the first square. The resulting position is the same as if the pawn had only moved one square forward and the enemy pawn had captured it normally. One of the rules about en passant is that uh, the capture must be made on the move that the pawn moves two squares forward. Uh, for example, if this pawn um, moved like this and then we decided to go like this and they did this, we can no longer do the en passant. Um, just to show you what en passant looks like, uh, if you were to go like that, see this X right here signals that I can en passant here and capture this pawn. Uh, as the name implies, the conceit is that uh, is that pawn, which ordinarily would only move one square at a time, cannot move immediately to a square two rows in front in front of it. It is thus vulnerable to being killed in its passing through the first square to get to the second. Um, I think it's interesting to know some history about chess and whatnot. So basically, the chessboard is like if it were a real war. If one army moves a unit adjacent to the enemy army, it is likely to provoke a return fire from the enemy army. Uh, in chess, this fire is basically uh, just the capturing of that pawn. Um, but en passant is a compensation for a pawn being allowed to advance two spaces on its first move. A unit that marched at, you know, in a war, if a unit marched at double time, um, it would probably rest halfway through its journey and then, you know, resume marching on to its destination. So assuming that the army uh, marches one square, rests, then tries to complete its march to the second square, um, but if there is an enemy pawn on the adjacent file, that pawn might start a duel with the marching pawn while it's resting. Uh, that would result in the enemy army, you know, capturing the resting army. So that's some history that goes along with en passant. Um, I think that the history of some of this stuff is interesting. Originally, um, it was only allowed to move a pawn one square at a time, but this, they found back in like the 1500s that this led to two slow games, so they implemented a double move. Um, and that's another thing about en passant is that for example, it has to be on the pawn's first move in order to move two spaces ahead, so this can never occur right here. It's only on its first move when it moves to an adjacent file that we are able to capture it. I think uh, en passant is interesting because um, it's the only move in the game that allows for a double discover check. Um, so, And this is the only um, situation in which this is really possible. Um, so for example, imagine this is the position. If they decide to move their pawn two spaces two spaces at once, thinking he's doing a double attack, and if we capture, he can just capture back with his king, but instead, it allows us a double discovered check, and this is the only time in the game in which this is <laughs> allowed. Um, he would just capture back the pawn, but again, the discovered, the, the double discover attack is the only time this is possible in the game, which is interesting to me. Anyways, I hope you understand a little bit more about what en passant is, and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your chess, video, your chess games. Goodbye. What's up, guys? Thanks again for watching my video here today. I really appreciate it, and... Uh, if you have any questions about any specific moves or anything about the game, please leave them below. I'd love to answer those. Um, and last but not least, if you got anything out of this video at all, or you just simply enjoyed it, I would highly encourage you to subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot, and uh, that way you can you know, get in touch with any future videos that I put out. Anyways, have a good rest of your day, and good luck in your chess.